here's a couple of safety tips for those of you returning from deployment. Tip number one, don't die. Of course, in our profession, the ships, the sea, the battlefield, all have their accidents and errors, blunders, and bad luck. Your timing can be off. You can get caught up with the wrong crowd. Things happen, sometimes fate. We know this, but blunder and bad luck aside, there are always some people who think dying might be preferable to return. Here's an example. Coming back from deployment once, I told my pal, let's call him Dwarf, I was so depressed about my wife leaving me that I was thinking about shooting myself, as luck would have it. The tool was in hand. We were on a skeet range. Dwarf was so short, he had to offset that issue by getting his bench press up to twice his weight. He stood on a box to see properly over a destroyer's bridge wing. Firearms always have an offsetting effect. Dwarf liked offsets. No wonder he liked skeet. In naval practice, though, there is no offset for what we call a suicide ideation. Having heard me ideate, Dwarf was regulation compelled to tell my captain. The captain then would take me off the ship, have me examined, then detached for some assignment where my potential suicide would result in no skin off of his nose. Actually, my captain would have shipped me off because he was a pretty good guy. He was worried about me. Like Dwarf, a shipmate. And when you have a shipmate like Dwarf, he doesn't tell anybody about your suicide ideation. Instead, he looks at the shotgun for shooting clay targets and tells you, don't shoot yourself, shoot her. It had never occurred to me. <laughs> See, he says, look, if you shoot yourself, nothing happens. You just go. Whatever happens then doesn't count for shit. We'll just have to find some way to fill your spot on the watch bill. You think she'll care? I gave it some thought. Uh, she might, I said. So you're going to do it to make her feel bad so she'll pay attention? That's... Why, you want to shoot yourself? Shoot her, he said. Then what happens? You go to jail. She'll be dead. Something might happen afterward, but you won't have to worry about her. You won't have to, you don't want to shoot yourself to make her feel bad. You're missing the point. Besides, if you shoot yourself, you'll make somebody have to read that teary-weary, dumbass letter you're going to write. <laughs> I'd already written a letter. I've always liked those letters from the combat dead, the ones that start, Dear Mom and Dad, in case something happens, the letters no one sees unless some blunder, bad luck, or fate gets in the way. Hoping to measure up, I bought some good stationery cream colored from an expensive store. I copied the letter out by hand, measured every word. I mimicked that special courage and grace only the dead can bear. Hoping if some blunder or bad luck occurred, someone might read it and care about me. I wrote it to my wife. I kept it in my safe, which would be opened and inventoried if I tried out that shotgun on my forehead. I didn't have to write a teary, weary, stupid, dumbass letter. It was already finished, ready to go. Shoot her, I said. Right, Dwarf told me. Or don't shoot her, but don't shoot yourself, man. That's beyond dumb. Look, shoot a clay pigeon instead. It's not all about you, asshole. You've got <laughs> shipmates, too. You've got us, and we've got you. So here's another tip. <clears throat> Be careful what you leave behind. The way this works, when you don't pay the rent for your storage box, somebody buys whatever you left behind, then sells what they can. While I was away for Desert Storm, some guy bought my stuff, sold the skis, beat up furniture, old lamps, dishes, the stuff from a marriage gone bad. Then for some reason, he looked through all the boxes of papers and bills, stories I'd written, childhood clippings my mother Gave me junk, all junk, and he found a letter. Of course, he called my dad. Asked him if I was all right. Did I want my papers back? Dad said maybe I would. The scavenger lived out in the East County portion of San Diego where citizens and the architecture are equally weathered. <laughs> he had a couple of dogs. Ordinary, stray-looking dogs, friendly and curious, and I found, found him working on an RV. He told me he got it after it was repossessed. He said, I was sorry to have to sell your goods after I read that letter. Go ahead and make, take your papers. Here's this. He handed it to me, a cream-colored envelope bought in an expensive store, a teary weary letter I'd written practicing to be dead. Now a stranger standing on a hard scrabble porch in the East County heat was saying, I thought you died, thought your family might have wanted it, you know. 
I'm glad to be able to give it to you. I'm a vet, too. I'm glad you're okay. He held out his hand, and I shook it. He said, how was it over there? I told him it was better than I had expected, not as good as I had hoped, because you're supposed to say something like that coming back from deployment. He nodded the way he's supposed to nod. And how is that, the way he was supposed to nod, as if he, was if he, as if he understood, as if it was OK, as if I was forgiven, I had not realized I would need this forgiveness, but there it was, given. That night I went through those papers and got rid of bills I never paid, letters I never sent, tax forms never filed, all the stuff I had kept out of guilt or laziness in my apartment filled with all those years when I had been happy, when I thought my wife had been happy, all the years away, all the longing, wishing, waiting, sorrow for the end of one deployment or another, the movement on and on. The last four years of our marriage, we had lived with each other less than six months. It was a Saturday night when other people were out of on the town having fun, dancing, telling jokes, preening and flirting over their date night dinners full of adventure and hope. I hadn't thought much about my former wife for a long time. Before I shredded my teary-weary dumbass letter, I read it all again, feeling that stunning embarrassment over the blunders of the younger me. How could I write that sort of letter, hoping it would get printed someday? How could I hope for one of those battlefield moments, some accident of fate, error, bad timing, or bad luck intervening, as if somehow it would make some sense out of the life I'd quit trying to carry forward? How could I have been so stupid to actually consider that shotgun? Then it was me, living, not killed, in that apartment not shot by myself or anyone else, this miserable, humiliating letter shows up and I realized then what the East Coast scavenger had forgiven. I had thought I needed to remember. My duty was to remember. It's not true. You do not have to remember the truth. We don't have to remember how we felt. We can heal. We can move on find our own places. Here are two tips for those of you returning from deployment. Don't die. Be careful what you leave behind. Do that, and it won't matter the way you were. You can fix it. Do that, and you can find a way to be forgiven and a way to forget. Do that, and there is still a chance you'll find the love you let go.